Number 53. Jogging on hard surfaces with insufficiently padded shoes produces large forces in the feet and legs. Letter A. Calculate the magnitude of the force needed to stop the downward motion of a jogger's leg if his leg has a mass of 13 kilograms, a speed of 6 meters per second, and stops in a distance of 1.5 centimeters. Be certain to include the weight of the 75 kilogram jogger's body. All right. So first... Um, well, why don't we take a look at my Picasso over here, and we have a jogger who's obviously jogging in the right-handed direction, and um, his leg is elevated, all right, and it weighs 13 kilograms, and it's going to have a velocity of 6 meters uh, per second, and it's, that's going to be in the downward direction, all right? So if I now think about what happens when this jogger's leg hits the floor, well, there's really two things that happen, or there's two forces, right, that are present. One force will be the force necessary to stop the energy, right, of this uh, jogger's leg. And the other force that's needed is to stop his weight, right, overall weight, or I don't want to, maybe not stop his weight, but balance his weight, let's say. Okay. So basically, I'm thinking about, well, there's two parts to this problem. Okay. One is an energy, uh, one has an energy component, right? There's a speed and uh, there's a mass. So most likely we're dealing with kinetic energy. And then the other part, is um, just a pure weight uh, opposing force uh, part. So let's first take a look at this equation over here on the right hand side. Okay, this says that the work, the work done uh, necessary to either produce a force or stop a force is equal to the force that's applied multiplied by the distance over which that force is applied times the cosine of the angle between these two vectors, the force vector and the distance vector. So just let's simply solve this for F all right, so divide out d cosine theta from both sides. So this becomes work over the distance times the cosine of the angle. Now, uh, work, remember, is just basically, its unit is in joule, right? So it's basically an energy. So what energy is apparent in this problem? Well, it looks like kinetic energy, right? So what I want to do now is I want to take this equation, all right, substitute 1 half mv squared on in for the work because that is the energy of the problem. It's kinetic energy. So, and it's probably useful to think about it in terms of change in kinetic energy, right? So I'll put change in kinetic energy over d cosine theta. All right, now let me expand on the change in energy, all right, kinetic energy that is. So this becomes now 1 half m times the final velocity squared minus the initial velocity squared all over d cosine theta, all right? Now, when I calculate this, all right, because I actually know everything now needed to calculate F, I just have to think about what F represents. So F in this problem, the force represents the energy, excuse me, the force needed to stop this energy of his leg. All right, that's what this represents. Now, th so what, I'll, what I'm going to write here is this is the force needed to stop the energy, all right, of his leg. So just remember that as a little e. Okay, F sub E. So now let's calculate this. All right, this, is, this won't be the final answer though, and I'll explain in a second. But let's calculate. So this is going to be one half times the mass of the leg, right? Because I'm, let me just save a little space. Um, the mass here is not going to be the combined mass. All right, it's going to be just the mass of the leg. All right, because that's the object that has a speed. All right, so the assumption here is that the 75 kilogram person kind of has, you know, let's say his center of mass is here, and that center of mass is not, you know, as he's running, it's not going up and down. It's just staying totally uh, linear, all right? Because if it is going up and down, well, they didn't tell me by how much, and I can't calculate that. So I have to assume it's staying, you know, um, uh, linear. So the mass of the leg is 13 kilograms, okay? The uh, final velocity was zero, right? It's the leg stopped minus then the initial, which was six meters per second, that's squared. All divided by now, the distance over which uh, that leg is stopping, and it says it stops in the distance of 1.5 centimeters. Now remember, you got to convert that to meters. So just divide by 100. So this is 0 0.0150. 0. And then times the cosine, oops, times the cosine of the angle, right, between the force necessary, um, or let, let me say the force produced by the leg and then the distance over which uh, that force was applied. 
So if I were to draw a picture that represents this, let me draw it on the right hand side, like a free body diagram. The distance over which the leg is traveling is clearly in the picture, it's downward, right? So it's a downward direction, it's a downward distance. But now the force here that is applied, right, to stop the uh, leg energy ha will be in the opposite direction, right? The, the pavement here is going to be producing an upward force. So since, right, since the distance is down, but yet the force is up, I have a 180, deg uh, 180 degree um, separation or angle between them, right? So therefore, that means that cosine here will be 180, okay? So, and this Fe now, if I frame it in that way, that's this variable up there. So let's just calculate. So let's see, F sub E now will be what? Let's calculate. 0. 0.5 times 13 times, now don't, don't include with parentheses negative six squared, all right? Make, make sure that the, uh, you're squaring six and then doing the negative after, all right? And then that will be divided by 0. 0.015. I should have put parentheses there, 0 0.015 times the cosine of 180. So we get a positive value, which we should expect to have, right? Given how I frame the problem. So this is 1.56 times 10 raised to the fourth. Now that's in Newtons. Okay, so this is the force that the pavement will produce to oppose the energy of his leg. All right, so that's this F sub E value. But also consider that I'm going to draw another free body diagram. Also consider though, once he brings his leg down, right, once this leg comes down, his full weight then will be resting on that leg, right? So there's really another component to this problem, and that is that there is the force of his weight, right? I'll just call it force sub W, all right? That when he finally fully extends his leg, all of his mass will now be resting on that leg, and therefore, there's gonna be a force due to his weight. Now, what's the pavement gonna do? Well, the pavement's going to supply a force that's equal but opposite in direction. Why? Well, because there's no acceleration at the moment he strikes the pavement, right? His foot stops accelerating at all. So therefore, I know that this force up here will be the force, right? I'll, what do I wanna call it? I'll just call it, um, Force that opposes his weight. Let me let me write that. So F O W. All right. So the force that opposes his weight. So now knowing that there's no acceleration here, or that acceleration is equal to zero, that means the sum of the forces will equal zero, right? And that means that F O W minus F W will equal zero, and therefore F O W equals F W. Right. So this should makes this should make sense. Now what I'm after is I'm after this. Okay. For right now. So how do I find the force that would oppose his weight? Well, all I got to do is find his weight, right? That's fairly straightforward. So let me do that over here on the, I'll do it on the bottom left since all my work is down here for this part. So then the force that opposes the weight will equal his weight, right? So mg, so his mass was 75 kilograms and times 9.80. So the force that opposes the weight will simply be 75 times 9.8. So 735, okay, so there's, so there's 735 Newtons. Now, let's take a step back and look. In order to stop the downward motion, so going back to the question, in order to stop the downward motion of the jogger's leg, the pavement has to produce a force necessary to stop the downward energy of the leg and stop the weight of his body. So two things, right? So therefore I can say this, I could say now that the force, right, necessary to, let's say, stop his leg completely should be equal to the force necessary to oppose the energy of the leg plus the force necessary to oppose his weight. So the force necessary then to stop his leg should be equal to 1.56 times 10 to the fourth plus 735. And then just combining these terms should be fairly straightforward. So the force needed to stop his leg should be equal to 1.56 times 10 to the fourth plus 735. And what do we get? We get 1.63 
So 1.63 times 10 to the fourth newtons. That is the answer for A. Okay, this is the answer. All right, a little confusing, and there's a couple parts to it, but hopefully it should make some sense now. And then, so let's take a look at letter B. It says, compare this force with the, jog with the weight of the jogger. All right, so this is fairly straightforward. Let me just erase this line here. Okay, so let's take a look at letter B. I'll put it right here. And let me put down, this was all work for A. Okay, so for letter B, we just got to compare it to the weight of the jogger. So basically, let's take the force necessary to stop the leg and just divide it by the force of his weight. Okay, it's just a simple ratio. So this is the 1.63 times 10 to the fourth divided by the force of his weight, which was 75 kilograms, right, times the 9.8. And what does that ratio become? So 1.63 times 10 to the fourth divided by parentheses 75 times 9.8. So this is about 22, right? 22.2 if you want. 22.2. That means that the force necessary to stop his leg is 22.2 uh, uh, times larger than his actual weight. So that's pretty significant. And the reason why it is is because this stopping distance over here is so, oops, the stopping distance over here is so short. So that's due to the insufficiently padded shoes. If his shoes were padded more, this stopping distance would have gone up, right? And you find the stopping distance here in the, in the formula. If that stopping distance goes up, then the force needed to stop the energy goes down, all right? And then if the force of the energy uh, needed to stop his leg goes down, uh, then this term also goes down, right? Because here's the force. And then that means this numerator goes down, and then that means this ratio goes down. All right. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe. It definitely helps support us, and we appreciate it so very much. So if we've helped you out in any way, uh, that would be awesome if you could just click that subscribe button. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon.